Yo, what's going on you guys? In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you a care guide on a lizard that I consider to be probably the best to own for beginner reptile keepers, and that is the leopard gecko. In this video, we're gonna cover everything from what they eat to their housing and everything in between. My name's Pierce LaValle, this is Pierce's Planet. Stick around. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you all are doing amazing. As I said in the intro, this video is going to be all about leopard geckos and how to care for them. Before we get into everything there is to know about leopard geckos, I did just want to put out a disclaimer. I am in no way, shape, or form a Philadelphia 76ers fan, okay? I just wanted to put that out there. I am a Sacramento Kings fan, but I know my dad's gonna be watching this video and I know for a fact I'm gonna be getting a text after this when this video drops asking me why the heck are you wearing that stupid hat? So, I just wanted to put that out there. I'm not a fan. I like the hat because it goes along with a lot of outfits because it's black and that's the simple reason for it, all right? So don't crucify me for wearing this hat. I'm still a Sacramento Kings fan. So now that we got that out of the way, we can dive into why we are all really here and that is to talk about leopard geckos. As you guys may or may not already know, I actually own two leopard geckos myself. The first is Leo. He was one of the first leopard geckos that I ever owned. And the second is Littlefoot. He is one that I rescued about three or four years ago. So I think leopard geckos are amazing animals and I think they make amazing pets. I actually, one of my first videos I ever posted on this channel was the top five lizards for beginner keepers and leopard geckos rounded out that list at number one. Leopard geckos are extremely popular in the reptile hobby and in the pet trade and it shows by just the amount that are available from breeders and other sources and also just by the sheer number of people that actually own them. In the wild, leopard geckos can be found throughout the Middle East in countries such as Afghanistan and Pakistan and the habitat they live in can be really harsh. They prefer to live in desert or semi-arid grassland environments, and those environments can be really tough to live in. But what that does do is that makes them really hardy animals, and that helps us when we're taking care of them in captivity. Um, it makes them really hardy and easier to care for. The lifespan of a leopard gecko can range anywhere from 10 to 20 years. So as I say, with it feels like almost any animal that I do a care guide on this channel, when you think about getting a leopard gecko, you gotta think of it as a long-term commitment. This isn't an animal that is only gonna be around for a couple of years, such as a rat. This is an animal that you're gonna have for a good chunk of your life, and you wanna make sure that you are in the position to be able to take care of this animal for the long term. My leopard gecko Leo is about 17 or 18 years old, so he's on the tail end of that lifespan, but he's still going strong. So he's just proof that if you take care of them the right way, they can live a very long and healthy life. When it comes to their temperament, one of the reasons why leopard geckos are so popular is because they are so friendly, especially if you get them from a young age and you put in the time to uh, spend it with them and get your leopard gecko used to you. Um, you can have an animal that is just extremely docile and wants to be around you. You don't really have to worry about leopard geckos biting you, and even if they do bite you, they got really, really small teeth. It, it, it doesn't really feel like much. It won't even break the skin most of the time. So that's not really something that you need to be concerned about. So that's why I think that they're great, especially for kids, because there isn't really an injury factor there um, in terms of the gecko actually injuring a child or injuring a person. Now myself personally, I avoid handling my leopard geckos too often. And the reason for that is simple. I just feel like leopard geckos are on the smaller side. And so they're a little bit more delicate than something like say a bearded dragon. Leopard geckos can be prone to dropping their tails when they're startled or when they're frightened. 
Um, it's a defense mechanism for them that they use in the wild to get away from predators. Now, the good thing about this is, is that if a leopard gecko does drop its tail, don't panic. I know it could be a little traumatizing for um, especially children if they see it for the first time, but that tail will go, grow back, unlike something like a crested gecko whose tail never grows back. So that is a good thing about that, but I just prefer not to really stress my geckos out too much in that way. But if you get a gecko that's young enough and you're handling them from a young age, um, you can get them to the point to where they're really comfortable with you and to where that's not even really a concern. Now let's talk about leopard gecko enclosure size. You guys have heard me say it before on this channel and I'll say it again. I always say that bigger enclosures are usually better, um, but leopard geckos might be a little bit of an exception. When they're young and when they're babies because they are prone to drop those tails and be frightened and, and they stress out really easily, it's better to have them in a smaller enclosure when they're young. So when they're juveniles and when they're babies, I would recommend putting them in something along the lines of a 10 gallon enclosure. Once they become full grown, you can upgrade them to a larger enclosure. The consensus seems to be online that a 20 gallon enclosure will suffice for a single leopard gecko. But as I've said before, I, pref I think that bigger is usually better when it comes to enclosure sizes. Um, so if you can do bigger, then I would say go for it. And staying along the lines of the enclosure, I've seen mixed things online about whether or not you should cohabitate leopard geckos. In my personal opinion, I would say do not cohabitate your leopard geckos. They are fine without having a buddy. They're not gonna be lonely. I know a lot of pet stores such as PetSmart and Petco, um, when they're selling leopard geckos, they have just a bunch in one enclosure. You can kind of get away with that a little bit when they're young, but as they become older and once they become adults, um, especially if they don't have a, enough space, they will fight each other for territory, especially males. But I would say don't even risk it and keep your leopard ge gecko separate. I have two leopard geckos myself and they have their own enclosures. They don't ever interact with each other. In terms of the substrate for your leopard gecko, there's a lot of different options that you can go with and I know sometimes when you're buying, when you're when you're going out and you're looking for substrates to, to start your enclosure, it can be a little overwhelming. So I'm gonna try to help you out with that. I'm gonna start off by saying what I would avoid if I were you when it comes to your substrate. I would avoid the calcium sand substrates. You'll find them all over the place in in Petco's and PetSmart's, but I would avoid the calcium sand and I would avoid the walnut, the ground walnut sand. Those two sands, um, there's a high likelihood of uh, impaction. Um, and if your leopard geckos ingest too much of that sand, it can actually end up killing them. So those are sands that I used to use before I had the knowledge and educated myself on better substrates to use. Um, and I know they're really common, so, but I would avoid them if I were you. Another substrate I would avoid using completely is the Repti carpet, or at least I, I think that's what it's called. Um, it looks like green AstroTurf, and the reason why it's bad is because there's like little loops in it and your gecko's nails can actually get caught in it and they can actually rip those nails out and it's it's not a pretty sight so avoid using that along with the calcium sands as well i've always been a fan of eco earth and you can mix eco earth with soil to kind of give it a better texture if you want to um, I always, I, I've always thought that Eco Earth was a was a really good substrate to use. But what I use personally, I have my leopard geckos in a bioactive setup, and so I really enjoy the bioactive enclosures. I really enjoy having the live plants in those enclosures. I just think that those substrates work the best. So the substrate that I use is called Terra Sahara and it's from the Bio Dude. I'll actually, I'll put some links down below in my description of this video so that you guys can have links to all the things that I use for my enclosure. But the Terra Sahara substrate from the Bio Dude is specifically made for desert dwelling species such as leopard geckos and bearded dragons and I think it works great and it looks really good too. Other substrates that I've seen people use so that they can avoid the risk of impaction um, altogether are 
actual floor tiles. I've seen people put floor tiles in their enclosure. That works too. Um, I don't think it looks as good aesthetically, but um, you have no risk of impaction and it's an easy clean if you wanted to use that. I've also seen people use newspaper and paper towels. Again, I don't think it looks aesthetically pleasing, but it makes cleaning very easy and you don't have that risk of your leopard gecko ingesting any of that loose substrate. Make sure you give your leopard gecko some places to hide. They like to hide in burrows in the ground, so if you can, try to simulate that in your enclosure and just have fun with it. You know, building enclosures is one of the most fun parts about owning a reptile in general, especially leopard geckos. And so just play around with it and, and do what, what you think looks good. So now let's talk about heating. As I mentioned earlier in the video, leopard geckos are from desert and semi-arid environments so they like their enclosures to be warm but they don't like their enclosures to be as warm as you may expect from a desert dwelling animal so when it comes to the temperature inside of a leopard gecko's enclosure kind of like a lot of other reptiles that you may own you want a temperature gradient in that enclosure and what that means is you want one side of the enclosure to be cooler than the other side so on the cool side of the enclosure you want the temperature to be around 75 degrees and you want your leopard gecko's basking spot to be around 90 degrees, which isn't as warm as you may expect from a desert dwelling animal. The ways you can heat up your basking spot for your leopard gecko can vary. You can use ceramic heat emitters, you can use Repti Sun bulbs, you can also use under tank emitters if you have burrows for your leopard gecko. I tend to prefer the under tank heaters for the leopard geckos because they spend a lot of their time in their burrows. Another thing that you're gonna wanna get for your leopard gecko enclosure is a UVB light. Now, UVB lights aren't necessarily required for a leopard gecko, but I strongly, strongly recommend it. You can never go wrong with having a UVB light on for your leopard gecko. UVB is always gonna be beneficial for any reptile that you have, even if it's not necessarily required. Just make sure that you turn off your lights at night because leopard geckos are crepuscular, which means they're most active at dawn and dusk. Um, and they can also be active at night as well. So you wanna get, make sure that they're getting uh, 12 hours of light on, 12 hours of light off to kind of mimic the sun going up and down for them. Now let's talk about water and humidity. Now I know leopard geckos are from desert climates, which means that they have adapted to be really hardy animals and they can survive without water for long periods of time. With that being said, in captivity, we don't wanna make their life harder. We wanna make it to where their life is as easy as it possibly can. And we want our leopard geckos to live the easiest, healthiest life that we could possibly provide for them. And a part of doing that is giving them fresh water every day. H2O. Or at least making it available to them every day. Now that doesn't mean that your leopard gecko is gonna drink the water every day. You might not ever see your leopard gecko drink water, but it's important for them to have a small bowl of water so that they have that option if they do get thirsty. But with that being said, leopard geckos are not strong swimmers. So make sure the bowl's not too big because you don't want your leopard gecko to accidentally crawl inside of it and drown. Now with them being from desert environments, you would think that leopard geckos wouldn't like human enclosures, but that's actually not the case. Leopard geckos actually thrive when their humidity is around 30 to 40%. So that's actually one of the benefits of having a bioactive enclosure because those live plants that you have in a bioactive enclosure will actually help you maintain your humidity. If you don't have a bioactive enclosure and you have no reason to spray inside of your leopard gecko's cage. You can also use something like a humid hide, which is basically just like a hide box, and you'll put moss in it and you'll spray that and wet that up, and then that gives your leopard gecko the option of if they want that humidity or not, and they can go in and out of that humid hide as they please. A lot of people use that. I don't necessarily use humid hides because my enclosure is bioactive and I have to spray the inside of it, but humid hides can be very, very effective. 
Another reason why you wanna make sure you're maintaining that humidity is to promote healthy sheds. And as you may already know, when it comes to reptiles, a healthy shed is the number one sign that you have a healthy animal. But there is a balance. You wanna make sure that you're maintaining that humidity around 30 to 40%, but you don't wanna maintain it too high. You don't wanna keep it at 60% because that's when your animal, your leopard gecko, can develop respiratory issues. So there's a fine line and there's a balance to it. So what I would recommend is putting a humidity gauge inside of your enclosure to help you maintain and help you know where your humidity is at at all times. Now let's talk about leopard gecko diets. And honestly, it's one of the most fun parts, in my opinion, about owning a leopard gecko. Leopard geckos are insectivores, which means they only eat insects. But the most fun part about that is, is that they're active hunters. So you get to actually watch them hunt and chase their prey as if they were in the wild. And that, it, to me, is one of the most entertaining parts about owning a leopard gecko. So the question you may be asking is what kinds of insects should you be feeding your leopard geckos? I feed my leopard geckos a steady diet of a mix of different insects, but the main insects that they get fed are crickets, dubia roaches, and mealworms. Crickets and mealworms tend to make up the bulk of my leopard geckos diets for the simple fact that when it comes to dubia roaches, they tend to be able to hide very well. And when I have a bioactive enclosure the way that I do, the dubia roaches find hiding spots everywhere in there. So it's really hard for my leopard geckos to f actually find them and be able to eat them. So if I do feed dubia roaches, I'm usually doing it off of tongs for my leopard gecko. Other insects that you can feed your leopard geckos are silkworms, hornworms, and waxworms. I would give them these insects as a treat because they can tend to be really fatty and your leopard gecko leopard geckos can actually get kind of addicted to them, you know, it's like a drug to them. So I would avoid giving it to them too often, but as a treat, it's totally okay to give those, those insects to your leopard gecko. Okay, now let's talk about leopard gecko availability and I'm just gonna keep this short and sweet. They're available. Literally any pet store you go to, you will be able to find leopard geckos there. So, what does it cost to keep a leopard gecko? Well, leopard geckos themselves are not expensive at all. I mean, when you're talking about just a basic leopard gecko, no special morphs or anything, you might be spending about $40 on the actual gecko itself. Now, once you start getting into morphs and different designer breeds and, and stuff like that, you might have to start, you, you're gonna start spending a little bit more money. But all in all, leopard geckos are very, very affordable. The most, the majority of what you're gonna be spending your money on is the enclosure and the initial setup. But even then with the initial setup, you're not looking at too much money anywhere. You're probably gonna be looking at anywhere from 200 to $400. That includes the enclosure, the lighting, the substrate and all that jazz. Really not too expensive. Then you gotta take into consideration your weekly expenses, and really that's just their food, and their food is crickets. Crickets, I believe, are like 20, 30 cents per cricket, so I, if you're buying 10 to 20 crickets every time you feed your leopard gecko, I don't know, I'm horrible at math, but do the math on that. Not too expensive. So really the overall cost of owning a leopard gecko is not that much, which is, Another reason why I think they make just amazing pets. I think I've said it since the birth of this channel, you guys. Leopard geckos make amazing pets. And there's a reason why I said when I first started this channel that I believe that they are the best pet lizard for beginner keepers. Just, they have the personality, they have the temperament, they're easy to take care of. And even if you're a seasoned reptile keeper like myself, you can still enjoy owning them. I mean, they just have amazing personalities, they're fun to watch eat. I could go on and on and on about what makes leopard gecko so great. I really hope that this video was informational and helpful for you guys. I hope that if you were kind of, you know, going back and forth between whether or not to get a leopard gecko, that this video kind of helped you make that decision. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of leopard geckos and if you would consider getting a leopard gecko. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and please, please, please share this video. Until next time, everybody, my name's Pierce LaValle. We are in Pierce's planet. And remember, it's all about the reps, baby. Peace. And, uh,
Um, it's just, it's not good at all. Uh, there's, why, why can't I talk? Okay, it's all right, I'm rusty. I'm rusty, let's do this. So they can't climb on solid surfaces and on walls such as crested get like crack I'm like glitching. They like to hide underground in burrows, so if you can try to simulate try to simulate. Is it simulate? Simulate? As I mentioned before, leopard geckos are from desert and semi, 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 semi,